want to take this time and uh, welcome you to our service, our Youth Month opening service. We are just giving more people time before we hand over to our president to open this service for us. Uh, let us just uh, take some time to hear ourselves, to hear the word of God as the young people of the Alexander Johannesburg Circuit 902. Thank you, brothers and sisters in Christ. I shall now hand over to President of the Wesley Guild in the Alexander Johannesburg Circuit to lead us in the opening of this service and the lighting of the candle. I hand over to Reverend Akona Kamsa. Thank you to the Vice President of the Circuit, who also happens to be the Vice President of our district. Friends, as we commence this service this afternoon, we are going to begin by lighting our candle as we continue to be mindful of the realities, the fact that there are those who need at this time more than ever, the intervention of the spirit of God in their lives. We thank God that we are able to meet in this fashion as we commence this youth month. So as we light our candle, I ask 
that in your heart you hold those who, who are in need of the intervention of the Spirit of God, those who are being um, retrenched at work, those who do not know when their next rent shall come from, those whose companies are being liquidated, and those who are in the bling of entering in a phase of depression. And so I ask that we lift them up in our prayers. As we remember what this hymn says, that ukfezwa kwa matinga, sigulinde apa. There is no other name up in heaven and below on earth. So when the going gets tough, when all else fails, the only thing that we know is that the one who called us, the one who created us, the one who has made it possible for us to gather this afternoon in this fashion is able. And so as we continue to hold those who need the intervention of God. I ask that wherever you are, wherever you are viewing us from, remember those who need the intervention of the spirit. I will be lighting the candle of hope, the candle of justice, as we pray that those who need this presence and the intervention of the spirit, that God would work his miracle after which we are going to go into a time of prayer. At this time, we are going into a time of prayer. May the Spirit of God indeed descend upon us. One of the early fathers of this continent of Africa once said, a nation whose young people are in constant sleep or slumber such a nation shall never realize her potential. Come, let us pray together. Eternal God, whose signature we see, if we dare, O oh God, to look in the creation of the universe, help us, Lord, this hour to look and to listen for your handwriting and your voice in this place among these, your people. Oh Lord, prepare our hearts for a new invention of your spirit. Connect, gracious God, our temporary praise to your timeless rhythm, your ageless melodies, your everlasting joyful noise. Guide us, Lord God, now to focus upon you, knowing that in you 
our distractions become new possibilities for action. Oh Lord, prepare our hearts for a new invention of your spirit. With life into every instrument, gracious God, that we shall be using this afternoon, including our praying, our listening and touching, that all these activities might become more than they are. Oh Lord, prepare our hearts for a new invention of your spirit. In our worship, we reach out to you, O oh God, knowing that you have already enfolded us in your arms. Thank you. In Jesus we pray. Amen. Friends, join us in the Lord's Prayer from wherever you are this afternoon. This time we find our scripture reading as recorded for us in the first letter of John, the epistle, chapter 3. We shall read from verse 1. We will read up to verse 3. The epistle of John, first epistle of John chapter three, we will read from verse one, we will read up to verse three. Our scripture reading this afternoon received and as it is recorded for us in the epistle, one John chapter three from verse one to verse three, we are God's children. See what kind of love the Father has given us. We are called God's children. And that is what we are. For this reason, the world does not recognize us because it did not recognize him either. Dear friends, we are now God's children, but what we will be like has not yet been revealed. We know that when the Messiah is revealed, we will be like him because we will see him as he is. 
verse three, and everyone who has this hope based on him keeps himself pure, just as the Messiah is pure. And so friends, this is the word of God for the people of God. We say thanks be to God. We now hand over to the executive to welcome us and perhaps um, some notices, if any, we are handing over back to you, Vice. Thank you very much, uh, Munga Meli, um, for opening this service for us. Um, we, we are really proud as young people to have this service and to come and have this service at this time as young people at such an important time uh, where we are facing the pandemic of COVID-19. But as it has been said as well, we are facing a second pandemic of gender-based violence in our country. And therefore, it is a sad time for young people to gather. But because we are people of faith, we gather and we want to hear the good news. And as our theme says, we continue to soar through relentless faith. And our faith, even through the situation, will not be shaken. So allow me to greet you, Mungameli, um, at this time and to greet Reverend um, Kuluba, who is our guest um, this afternoon, who will be sharing the good news with us. Therefore, Mfundis, we want you to accept our warm greetings uh, from the circuit 902. We're a very big circuit. When I was talking to Mfundis, uh, Reverend uh, Kamza, during the week, he was asking me what language must he use Ushumayela today. Ushumayela is slung 902. And I said to him, because we are in the middle of Johannesburg, we've got Intlanga Gintlanga from all over the country. We prefer English, but uh, if he feels comfortable with Mixer, uh, he can do that. So we welcome him for this, a Josie. She said Josie, but Alex Jobek. So we are in the heart of the movement um, of the country. So thank you very much and welcome for this. Um, we have no notices that we will give, except to say that we are going to have other programs that are going to continue as well um, throughout the, the month of September, where we are going to be having real talk sessions again looking at issues affecting young people. We are going to be sharing some of those uh, programs again. And we are going to have another service to close off Youth Month Year 2. We are going to have a mini revival where young people will also be sharing the good news. And then we get to hear what God has planted in our young people. And we are very excited to have Umfundi um, Sukulua from my hometown in Queenstown coming to share the good news with us and to set the tone for us really going forward um, in this month. Also to announce, um, Fundis, you, you had related earlier on that I'm also the Synod Vice President, so I'm gonna wear that hat as well in this service, that we are going to be having the e-consultation as the Central Synod. We thought that as Central Synod, we're not going to be stopped by COVID, but we're going to continue with our ministry as young people. No matter what is before us, we are going to continue with the work of young people. And this year we are having e-consultation when I was sharing with Reverend Amza earlier on, he told me, hey, this is our data yet. I told him, ah, you've got enough time to budget for that data. And uh, many other young people have that time to budget as well. I shall now hand over to the president to introduce Umfundi Sukuluba uh, before he then shares the word of God with us. Thank you, President, over to you. Thank you, Vice, and uh, the Vice of uh, our Senate. Uh, so this therefore means, Vice, that you are something that is uh, higher than what I am, uh, because I'm under the leadership of Reverend Mzinga as the coordinator. So I also take this time to, to acknowledge and to greet our second coordinator, uh, Reverend Mzinga, our uh, colleagues in ministry. Friends, Reverend Kuluba needs no introduction. And if I were to begin to introduce him, I would um, you know, spend most of the time allocated to this service. So I'm not even going to begin. Let it be enough to say he is a brother, he is a colleague, he is a prayer partner. He is the coordinator of the Queenstown Synod and a secretary elect of the Alwal North, 
I'm not sure whether it's called Igrili, uh, but it's an Alwal North uh, a Synod. Uh, I am not going to waste time introducing him, but what I do want to say, I have pulled Reverend Ukuluba out of a birthday celebration. Um, he was celebrating a birthday. They are celebrating a birthday as a family of one of their children. So thank you, Chawe, for making this sacrifice. I just want to welcome you with this song, I know that uh, next year you are going to be here. This is the man that was going to launch for us the Wednesdays of healing and transformation together with his wife. One of their strengths as a couple, they are worshippers. If you were to Google or go into YouTube, and you would find them, and especially the wife with Reverend School, uh, uh, Stemela, they are worshippers. So I thought I need to welcome you, Chawe, with this song that declares that in the midst of it all, Utito Ubukumkani Ubukumalisa. And whenever you are ready, sir, we are now handing over to you. Mandi Tateke Elituba and Bulise O President We Wesley Guild as a second um nine oh two um Umfunisu Kamza Bulisege our colleague um non coordinator was second umfundisi o o tabiso um tinga and bulisi vice uh yes chili ne saget and ugunjalo ne committee ako yonke. Bulisteke wonkum to o koyo o os mameleo nangaolum zuzu um the kameli shelum feli nom vugelwe tu uyesu krestu in kosye tu amen. Um let me I'm not sure if I should thank this opportunity. Um fundisu kamza <laughs> um but um simbule lutiko oba e a sneka ituba. Um, for us to once again uh, testify and witness about um, his grace. Yes, indeed, I've got a little girl here next to me waiting for me to finish so that we can continue celebrating her ninth birthday. Um, she's my princess. Um, and so um, she's sharing this time uh, with you all here. And so um, thank you so much once again. Um, well, Utiko Makas might take a song, Ugochiga singer Nekulengonzo, with just a few minutes uh, sharing the word with all of us, uh, with all of you uh, listening and viewing from wherever you are. I invite you to consecrate yourselves. Uh, I am not coming here as knowing it all or even the best um, in what we are called to do. Um, I come here with a passion to share what is burning in my bones, hoping that it will spill over to you, that you may, um, the spirit of God may find in your heart a place uh, to reside and a place to transform each and everyone's lives. Can we just take a moment of prayer a moment of prayer. Chiko tulung le yonko si enamanda amakulu si bulelo bukulu bako nangale njigalanga namtange. We thank you, Jesus, for the gift of grace. 
We thank you, Lord, that you give us opportunities once again, even in the midst of the pandemic and in the midst of separation. Uh, you are always with us. You are always encouraging us. You are always keeping us moving and going. We thank you for, the, for this platform that once again, you want to show yourself. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable to you, O God. Amen. Um, brothers and sisters, um, I wish to share with you just um, briefly on the passage of First John, the letter of the epistle, First John chapter three. Um, we read read from verse one through to verse three. And so we were given a theme, um, a theme that says sowing, sowing with relentless faith, sowing with relentless faith. And so um, we will try and explore or try to talk to that. However, I wish to warn you that um, I'm not going to go deep into it. A theme, a president, no coordinator, no vice. And so I was only um, invited here to Obagen Sivule Lenyanga Yabandabacha Kunye. And so if I happen not um, to speak to what you you were hoping for. I don't know what you are hoping for, but if I happen not to speak to what you are hoping for, just keep this thing that um, keep on keeping on. Uh, something good is just about to happen. Keep on keeping on. Something good is just about to happen. This is influenced basically by the theme that I was given that says uh, sowing through relentless faith. Uh, sowing, of course, it is an act of planting, meaning that putting a seed on the ground with the hope that um, a, 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 a plant or product or crop will sprout out of it, which in turn will give life uh, to the one that sows, meaning that an act of sowing uh, basically is an act that then gives hope. It is an act of hope. It is an act that tries to change a status quo. It is an act that that says, um, I am ex I'm expectant of something good that will come out of what I am sowing. And so that's why I'm saying to you, friends, keep on keeping on. Something good is just about to happen because you do not sow if you are not hoping for something that will come out of it. That's why um, among us, you reap what you sow, meaning that what you put on the ground will come out of it. If you put bad seed on the ground, it will, it will come out as a bad uh, uh, crop or product. But if you put um, a good seed on the ground, it will come out as a good product that will give you life. And so what you sow basically depends on, on the attitude of your heart, that's number one. And what you sow um, also depends on, on what you envision will come out of it in the end. And so before you put anything, before you sow anything, right, you then go about trying to find out what is best that I can do. Secondary to that, um, every season have a crop that, that, that sprouts out of each season. So when you sow, you do not sow a, a winter crop in summer and so a summer crop in winter, right? I'll talk to that much later. But 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 I was given this theme and it took me aback. I don't know if Mpunzu comes, I endeavor we share the same passion um, of, of somehow learning to work the land and stuff like that. But but this thing of sowing is very close to my heart. I will speak to it um, a little later. In the passage that we we have read, right? In the passage that we have read, the passage of John chapter three, first John chapter three, right? First John, meaning that the epistle um, of John chapter three, um, there is a passage in the end, um, in verse three, 
etike bonke abanalo elithemba bazenza nyulu bonke abanalo elithemba bazenza nyulu meaning that and all who have this hope in him purify themselves just as he is pure right and so and so and so this passage basically particularly verse 1 to verse 3 speaks exactly at 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 at, at Christ likeness meaning that it speak at somebody who has hope to be like Christ okay who has hope to be like Christ and and in the main um this passage has always been preached in the very future tense in the distant future but i want us to 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 try and zoom it and bring it closer and speak to it in the very near future rather than in the distant future meaning that let us talk to it not as a pie in the sky when i die but as something that we hope that it will happen now, 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 not too far apart from where we are. But in reflecting on this, on these three verses here first, brothers and sisters, um, when I say keep on keeping on, I wish you could be mindful or you could understand the context of this passage or the context in fact of, of, of St. John himself, because John um, writes a very differently from any other apostle and writes very differently from any other gospel writer for that matter and so his intention and his heart is basically writing towards a church that is troubled by a schism at the time that is the context of the time the, the church that he was writing to which was the church of ephesus it was a church that was troubled by a schism that had grown within the Christian community, that had created divisions within the, 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 the Christian community, that had created separation within the Christian community, that is, had created a breakaway kind of movement within the Christian community. This basic, um, this, this breakaway basically was caused by false teachings that appeared in the church of Christ, in the Ephesus church itself. While John and other apostles were preaching and teaching about a Christ who had gone to the cross, a Christ who had died on the cross and a Christ who had risen. And so the heart of John basically, what sets him, what sets John apart from the other gospel writers and any other writer um, in, 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 in about in the Bible writing about Jesus Christ. It, John is about to prove, his mission is about proving a Jesus who was 100% human and a Jesus who was 100% God. And this teaching that was coming into the church, that was infiltrating the church to a point of division, was teaching something different. If you like Mpunzu Kamza, you can say it was a heresy that was called a Gnosticism. Gnosticism therefore believed in that, yes, there was a Jesus, but this Jesus that, 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 that appeared or that, that existed was not a Jesus who happened to be flesh. He was a Jesus only in spirit because their doctrine and their belief believed in that what is matter is evil and what is spirit is pure. They are teaching basically, if you remember way back when we were doing standard five, in general science, there was a question that says, what is matter, right? And the answer to that question, what is matter, was that matter is anything that occupies space and has mass. And so the Gnosticism which appeared in the Ephesus church taught that Jesus Christ was no matter. Jesus Christ was in nothing tangible. Jesus Christ could have not been flesh because God could have not been flesh. And so this teaching therefore believed in that. It believed in that. Um, what is matter is evil and what is spirit is pure. And so to say Jesus was any matter, it means that you are saying Jesus was evil. And if you equate Jesus into any flesh, it would mean that Jesus Christ was evil. But St. John here is painstakingly trying to contradict that, trying to prove to his contemporaries that Jesus was indeed 100% human and 100% uh, a God. And so John 
First John chapter one verse one reads as follows: "And Utu John Panam singina esukbonileyo siteta esquaziyo sakpata ngesanja." Meaning that we testify and witness by what we have seen by a naked eye, and we speak about what we know, which we have touched by our own hands. That is in the very first verse of the epistles of, the, of, the epistles of John, the first John chapter one, verse one. That is his thesis that Jesus Christ was hundred percent human and hundred percent God. And so, in the verses that we talk, that that that, that um we have we have here read right it is it is that umvangelu okanye umposile u Johann eyonando ayizisayo apha is to try and keep those who had remained in the church because there were a group of people who believed in this false teaching and went away even though they believed in Jesus but they believed in certain things about Jesus and so they were infiltrated by this thing that was happening and mind you that it was happening in a christian community meaning that it was not happening in another faith or in another religion or in another church it was happening in the same church so as it happens in our churches today that while we preach an authentic gospel of jesus there are some of us disputing what we are teaching and trying to teach something different hence i always ask the young people that take time to read your scripture and take time to research about what you read don't regurgitate what preachers and ministers are saying when i preach here today i expect you to go back home and read about what i'm talking about because it may be just that i'm, I'm being heretic here and so that is the danger of the church of ephesus that they they, they experienced this false teaching and some people believed and and walked away of the church to try and form another schism and so john here is speaking to a community that was left inside the church. And when he speaks to this community, you don't need to go about looking for Jesus anywhere else. You don't need to go You don't need to change churches all the time. You don't need to all the time. You don't need to go about because you have been adopted as the child of God. That's why verse 1, we are the children of God. And so when you say we are the children of God. John says, hold on to that. You are the heir of the overcome. And so, and so as a child of God, right, you need to remain faithful in Jesus. And when you remain faithful in Jesus, you need to know that there is hope that when Jesus appears, we shall be like him. And so John moves on to say here, it is not yet clear what we shall become, but what we know, and he says we know it now, that we, when he appears, he said we shall be like him. And so when he says we know it now, now, right? He says we know it now that we are the children of God. And because we know it now, we need to hold on to that when Christ, because something good is just about to happen. And so we are not just traveling aimlessly. We are not just walking aimlessly. We're not just preaching aimlessly. We're not just teaching aim aimlessly. We teach because we hope we have a sense of expectancy that something good is just about to happen. And so believe you me when I say, keep on keeping on. Keep on keeping on. That's that's the first part that I wish to address, brothers and sisters, in this thing. And so the second thing that I wish to address, yeah, after the background, what I was telling you about the background of why or the context or the historical background of the context of the epistle of John to the church of Ephesus. And so John here doesn't speak in the third person. He uses pronouns as we and they, meaning that he is part of what he is talking to. And he's part of the witness that he is talking to. And then his pronouns changes to you 
and they and we, if you get what I'm trying to say. And so there is a distinction here between those who are made or who have to believe themselves and understand themselves as children of God. And there's others who have then uh, decided to move away with the schism. And then there's unity here where, where John is speaking about, meaning that this thing is about me and it is about you. And it's about me as an individual, understanding myself as a child of God, first and foremost. And secondary to that, it is about a community of believers, understanding ourselves as the children of God. And so this has a vertical and a horizontal understanding that in the first place, you must understand vertically your only connection with God that I am a child of God, and when you look at me, and then your Jesus in you have to be able to greet a Jesus in me, and a Jesus in me must be able to greet a Jesus in you, because we have the same DNA as being the children of God. Now, if then you are talking about being a child, somebody once said to me, Ibunisu Kamza, when I was fed up with everything to do with the church at some point. And then he said to me, you know, God is a parent. And so when God is a parent, he is all loving God. He is all loving and all embracing and everything like that. But there is a time when that very same parent becomes in your eyes, the worst parent ever. And when he becomes the worst parent ever, it doesn't mean that he has stopped parenting you. It only means that you are not then acquainted enough with how he is trying or she is trying to groom and raise you. And he says, no matter how hard you can run, you can never run, you can run faster than Hussein Bolt, but you will never run away from God. No matter how hard you can try, you can run. You can go to England, overseas, everywhere you want to go. But let me tell you something. You will, whenever they ask you, who is your parent, your father or your mother, you will always point back to that very same parent you ran away from and decided to desert and stay away in Joburg and everywhere else and hated so much going back home. The truth of the matter is that that parent whom you hate so much, that parent whom doesn't give you what you want now, that parent who says to you, learn to wait a bit, that parent who says to you, um, I'm going to do this, stand in a mud, that parent who says to you, right, no matter how hard you can run, you will never run away from that parent. Whenever they ask you who that parent is, you will always go back to that person and say, my parent is so and so. That's what it means when we say, now we are children of God. Let me not waste too much of your time, Funisu Kamza. Um, and then you will explore your own themes here. However, I want to speak a little bit about the three key words in your theme. You speak about sowing, you speak about the relentlessness, you speak about faith. You speak about sowing, you speak about the relentlessness, and you speak about faith. Well, um, just about um, every friend of mine knows that I have a new, a new passion. Um, it's recently developed in Punzu Kams. I hated it so much when I was young. It was not better, you know. But nowadays, um, I have found peace and solace in, in, in the garden, in the fields, right? And um, it has created the most fulfillment of my time in recent days. I spent all the lockdown in the, in the fields. Let me, let me share this story with you. I rented out a one hectare, for starters, uh, field in Simi hectare one. And I didn't know what to do with it. And so someone said, no, you can plant anything, you know. Then in February, I think I, think I, I got it in October. The following year in February, I decided that, okay, now I'm ready, I want to plant. I put money into it, I invested into it, I hired a tractor, I bought um, seedlings, Zomborn, and uh, emphatically, I went on to plant maize, yellow maize, in February. <clears throat> Those who are in the business of agriculture will tell you that February is the worst month 
to plant maize. But naively so, I said, I want to put it on. And I spent a lot of money in it. Um, January, I mean, March, while from a from from um, and then um, April, wakulumbona and then I took selfies uh, from Emma Simin, and then in May, wapumbona wafikele matole I took selfies and I sent you umbon right. Unfortunately, it was the end of May. Then winter started, and when winter started. A terrible cold, cold engulfed my, my, my proud field. I had a space of two weeks. And in vision, the imagination, the image of a kum, yom bona ol stars. That can be pinned and see, desire and your chin, your vuna umbona, you can sell an amum fundis, you benema, look and you can do chisam in Bashayam ekaya. Um, to my surprise, at the end of May, beginning of June, when I got into the field proudly so, galloping and riding high with a friend that never saw what I had done before. And the only reason that made me not to not to recognize my field, it is because Umbonawam, which I had sown so proudly, had turned brown. All of a sudden, all the greenness that was there, all the pride that was there, all everything that I would I would boast and, and, and be proud of had been turned brown. And I went even closer. That's hoping that I'll find some grains, grains of millis, at least in one in, in one. But I knew Vula Lombona, Le Con Evelio Abba, I was check and how disappointed I was, how heartbroken I was, how I wanted to live just about everything. But someone next to me said, Well, Yona in Beuyako Ibin, in Naki Obuna and Dobangabano, you planted, get Kaseli wrong. And so you can't expect to plant maize in February and expect to get maize in June because in June, Winter has already caught up with it. But he said to me, do not despair, Fundisim. Do not throw this away. Cut it down and put it into a hammer mill and, may, and mix it with many other things to make ingredients that you can use to feed livestock about it. So it is not all doom and gloom and loss, but this thing, although it had not turned out into something that you envisioned about it, but it had turned out into something that can be helpful and relieve you from the winter feed and stuff like the expenses of that field. So what I want to say to you is that you may sow a grain now, which you are proud of. You may sow a plant now, which doesn't come out in what you had envisioned about it. You may put your CV, you may have studied education or whatever that you have studied, but you got a different job that was not the purpose of your planning in the first place. I want to say to you, when you are sowing, understand that it will not always come out in what you want, but it will always come out in what you not necessarily want, but in what you need. Because what you need for a moment, God will transform what you see as a misfortune. God will transform what you see as a miss in your life. God will transform what you see as a waste of time and money and resources and transform it into becoming something that will give you joy and joy that will give you even more sustenance, more than you had ever envisioned before. Then you pass to Paul and say, Kungo ko singe timansha, goba, ka singe timansha, no mungu anga panje, we are so nagala, but mungu anga pagati, we are shazie ke manjeli, because mungu anga pagati, is already connected with the goodness of God. Wanga Parati is already connected with the purpose of God, and the purpose of God may not be what I want, which I have sown, but the purpose of God will what will come out of my grain, which I have sown, into becoming something that will be helpful going forward. So keep on keeping on and sow that seed. Understand this that you must be able to prepare and leave a room uh, for disappointment. But in that disappointment, learn to transform it. 
into becoming something that will help you. And so relentlessly, therefore, relentlessly, therefore, relentlessly means never say die kind of attitude. Relentless means continue in a determined way without interruption. Relentless means, I look at the dictionary, but I look at the dictionary and it says, continuing in a determined way without any interruptions. And this says, even the word determined up, up in Helene, right? Means that for you to have a determination, you know that something along the way might just go wrong, but I will not allow that thing will go. It will not interrupt me. And so when I, I saw relentlessly, I saw knowing that there will become a time where I will be able to do it. And so when you saw relentlessly, you continue without interruptions. You may experience false teaching. You may experience a schism in your family. You may experience a breakaway in your marriage or in a relationship and stuff like that. But sowing relentlessly means that even your relationship that has fallen apart will never deter you. Even your gender-based violence that has said that engulfed you will never deter you. It means that even if coronavirus can wipe out all your family will relentlessly, you know Know that you will remain a remnant that will testify about the word of God and say, Usatan Wayafunu Gundi Bulala, or Chito in a one shazia, Udinel Tatum Kibu Kaukila, Tassin Dagetina, Tatum Kibu Kaukila, Tassin Dagetina. You continue marching forward relentlessly and say, I know my Ritima leaves. Nova Umdomanga, Nova Ulusulam Lunga Shaf Kalu, and Hansayam, Isuka Utikota, the Mazum Shale Wam, Ushel, why I'm a even if the winds and the rains of this world can can batter and, and bruise us, but what we know is that umeloba supposedly quitting his that is relentlessly, because you know, last time of faith, relentlessly through faith, it is by faith that we are saved, right? Not by works. So you can sow, but your works will never give you anything, only by grace through faith. And so it is by faith. Let me put it to you from this. You can argue with Uvais Kandi Kabi that an equation of faith is equal to hope plus confidence. That's the equation of faith. An equation of faith is equal to faith is equal to hope plus confidence. And so when you sow, you sow with hope. But when you look at your grain, you gain confidence that something is going to happen. When I say keep on keeping on, I'm saying don't lose hope, but have confidence in what is not yet seen. It is the Hebrews that say faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not yet seen. And so when you hope, it means that there is something about you, there's something about your path, there's something about your life that doesn't come together. And so when it doesn't come together, it distracts you and interrupts you while you have sown, but you need to continue, keep on keeping on with determination, without interruption. It is Barack Obama who says, hope is that stubborn thing within us that keeps us going, that keeps us working, that keeps us moving against all evidence to the contrary. Against all evidence to the contrary, but hope becomes that stubborn thing within you. And so when I say faith is equal to hope plus confidence, it means that you become so stubborn about your future, so stubborn about what you want from God, so stubborn about anything that you wish 
to happen in Pilo Niako and begin to have confidence in what is going to happen. Meaning that when you have that hope, you begin to thank God in advance for the grain that will sprout out of your field that you have sown. You begin to say, thank you, Jesus. You begin to say, thank you, Jesus. You begin, even if even if it's tungu, as coming as quail, but you say thank you, Jesus. And so that hope keeps you going. When everything falls apart, that hope gives you confidence that regardless of my circumstances, I am the child of the Most High. My mother may not have been a queen, my father might have deserted me, but God fathered me. And so I am the child of God because God is the Most High. Lastly, I'm unfunished to take the coron here. Buffon is a man on the coron. Buffon is a man in his hand. But let me say, it can leave us of Cabell. Bonga Bana very timber as ends a new. All those who have this hope in him make themselves pure. Now, Purity is not perfection, right? Purity is not perfection, but purity is consciousness of what ought to be. Meaning that when you are conscious, having hope and confident, you then prepare yourself to receive. And so when you prepare yourself to receive, you live upright and you do not get deterred. You continue, you are determined. You don't allow the external forces to interrupt your goodness within you. You don't allow the external forces to change the goodness in you. And so you allow and feed a Jesus in you so much that even those who look at you and know your problems beforehand, when they look at you, but it's a must to say challenge. How can is she? We know that she's divorced, but how come does she have so much gloom? Because you have made yourself pure inside. And so you do not allow yourself to be drawn into the dark hell holes. And so to keep myself pure, if you are trying to go into all this, you are going to go into all this, you are going to go into all this, you are going to go into all Because now I'm determined to keep on keeping on. Baba, I am expectant of something good that, that is just about to happen. Let me close by this illustration when this comes. Let me close by this illustration. This guy, Conan Shalekaba, the Ipanga Lagunda Outfax, the AP, in this family, in the industrial areas. There was a church where Mfunzu Kif Munapula is now today. Everyone said Thornton Methodist Church. Pablo Tower, a fool, a langos, in Ovalo. And so this guy would walk from a factory every day at lunchtime. Lunch only took 30 minutes. He would walk from a factory into the chapel. I forget how in anger and a cook. It means was a baby being a pin that cheek. And so it 25 minutes. We spend the appendilene and the bullies on his way to the church and his way back. When he gets to the church, to the chapel, never bullies to auntie, no, 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 a pinda chik. A ta pinda chik a lom fo. Unum tanda as lom do otike. Koble tu mine ti akim fuzu kamza otike. Dear Jesus, it is me again. Thank you for the relationship that we have. O konda shanga na kwa mke lanjangum fel nung fugelwa. 
zange la pina na sogo lempilu niya. Kwa ngoba lo mvo, ungumvano mtaka, onga kamiyo, one oil, katatu na lapa shala kona. Uandi, oklina yo apa, wane waru, waya kumfundisi. Kunisa ndi mtandi lo mdoma nenge napa, uza uba izi pika sekao. I'm afraid that the, the, the valuable possessions of the church will get stolen by this man. <coughs> Before they could attend to it, then the guy disappeared. In that disappearance, in his disappearance, then umfuni so mane kobe fesiren upi lo mfo ebe mane siza ap. Agezi, la shali lizwi, umdu one kusha ezi hundred. Agu la shage yaanye, uya si ezi ninety nine. Ayo kangele zi hundred. Ama nufiku mbuzo, leli yetu umfuni si. Upi, what is a police station? Why are you criminal? Why are you a criminal? Why are you Simenza galisi. So figure spell the lawyer. Unless what is a look say, we are mass loan to what in their mass. What is under our hands along to loan to up? Or go on a little end out. Dinga mass no bookina. I mean, this is a bass aban back. I got the solas flowers. I got the sola gucha. I got ten on a legacy and a bandu. A bangana be puma up. What is a long book? Unless I am. What is Imanes? And Wundis. We are pass Wabuzu ngoba mbukutata. Watu nesi ya paza munendo anga ya ziju. Okoba mna. I make myself pure with Jesus. Watu mfundisi nchani. Watu mbona mfundisi. Woku ya. Dan mani ndipega etawe. Dan figa nditike tia Jesus. It is me Jimmy. Thank you once again for the relationship. E yaba kona pakat kwa mna awe. Ever since then, I became a changed person. What you get? And then go. That you can't do all the pity. What can be to us empty? As la pecalenqua. What just one as is to run fundis? As is to the corn in daughter. A man who says, Oh, shall I progress his tool in Bambang Sanja? It's a cum tiachimi. It is me, Jesus, checking on you once again. Ever since was sent on you, look. A man who be Zanga come. That I that I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. No but well, I'm in London. I say go to the cellar. Now I'm in Lewen. I say go to the Ngoba. Then to my piece. But I just come no babo. I go to when I go on. Nam jingo wako. When I say keep on keeping on. I want to pass a chonga. But let me seven times again in the hour. When you keep on keeping on. I want to pass a chonga. But let me hamba i panjagi. When you keep on keeping on. I want to pass a chonga. Pass a chonga. I understand him. When you keep on keeping on. But let me tell you. Something go back to Landa. But under the lag, we are going to hear Jesus. It is me, Lupa. I thank you for the relationship. As I can say, now you go. We shall figure it out. We don't know what that go on. Can the Lila Jim Funa? The last reason to son can can do a Suyan Jibona can the Lila Zalo. What is that? The Sabel Zalo. We talk about the go. The Pumle Guyesu. We go first the lag. The net. Tamba el kulungwa ka akapa na ka nesia pa yungwa ka ite na bona ka la china so fana na it is the apostle Paul who says utu chika gwe my grace is sufficient for you utu when I am weak then I am strong kandi swela mansha u kandi na mansha kwa a mansha asali seki so exole ke ngoma mansha keep on keeping on. Keep sowing that grain, keep moving, because something good is just about to happen. Because you are 
the child of the most high no ba wala hlwa ngumzali no ba wake wa abuse no ba wa yohlwa tsimbe sibhlungu go and tell the people who know your scars and who know your pain go and tell them that i am the child of the most high la manye bendi now at the evidence of the grace of god they were meant to kill me but grace and mercy said no about to bomb and so i move i move i keep on keeping on against all evidence to the contrary i have faith i have faith and i thank god in advance for things that he has, he has not yet done for me because i know i am the child of the most high punis mo sanele lamas chikoma ka sikelela chikoma ka tamsa ngimelise ke tamsa ngimelise nayo wonke umuntu odivayela izilam but keep on keeping on don't despair so that seed relentlessly that be determined be in uninterrupted and know that the grace will carry you those on the man seen faith and grace will carry you and know that go ahead to tell i go save aga lalo mtini ka israel le no akhole ngimamlezwe lo mfundzi qamza what gave sani kumna onke nina nesindwayo nibulele ka imithwalo yenu mna yonika ukuphumla ngo yesu christ inkosi yethu amen Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the gift of grace. We thank you for you keep us moving, for you keep us going. Tiko we tolungle, sakusela manda, tiko na manda, atum tolinda utinda utino, agpela wa manda. Yes, paga misi kwe zonke zanda, guamkele kuba manda. Tiko we tolungle, bless your children, give them strength, give them power. give them the will to carry on give them a never say die kind of attitude give them hope that will be covered up by confidence on things that are not yet seen we thank you jesus we thank you that you keep talking to us we care we thank you that you keep talking to our hearts we thank you that you continue to transform his life her life that life and that other life we thank you jesus we thank you lord we thank you father In the name of Jesus we pray unto you that from this day on us may we never remain the same amen back from wherever you are viewing us from this afternoon you are using this time you may unmute yourself from this to pray you have used this time to soak yourself doesn't matter what you are going through whether the world is beginning to shake and the evil never fades and yet you can say jehovah it's a billow wind we have nothing else if no other hope siabulela umfundisi ukuluba we are now inviting unobala kodwa nje umzuzo wodwa nobala sikwazi nje okoba sizi soke kwelithuba sizi soke emoyeni dicela ukubaxa sikumema nobala we use this time to also soak ourselves vatiswa uphu vatiswa mandi mulele mfundisi kosika kukhulu mungamela ibulise kubazalana bonke nabafundisi abakhoyo phakathi kwethu ngelihli gama lengosidi ngesi Kristu amen to umfundisi uqulu umfundisi wami ndithunywa kabantu wona bakamfundisi ukugcamza kule segethi yase 902 ukudlulisa nje amazwe ombulelo ongazenzisiyo really from the depths of our hearts thank you very much umfundisi for 
sharing this day with us. A special day. Ka princess usbulelele na kuye nosa polongo usbulega wena. Kalem vagumini. We thank you, Mfundesi, for the message you've shared with us. Kama fuchane ndeti siguvile kwa isitengosi. Mungamil, thank you very much to you too. And uh, also words of gratitude to everyone else that has joined the service via Zoom, via Facebook, brothers and sisters, family and friends. We thank you very much for continuing to support the services. And we are praying for blessings, endless blessings um, over your lives all. Thank you very much. Uh, Think you unmute uh, it's it's unfortunate that in the songs that we have here we do not have a happy birthday song but we wish you god's grace god's blessing may you grow in wisdom for borrowing us your father that we could share this special day your special day uh, that you have allowed your father to share it with us. And so this is our way of saying happy birthday to you. I'm sure we are going to send something for the cake. So if daddy doesn't buy a cake tomorrow, ask him what happened to what Mfundi said we were going to share. Friends, see, see up on the cool. Uh, see, and vice We are we we are tired in the district in Bosian. Snigel a good vice. Thank you very much, and thank you for and we give happy birthday to the young princess. Um, And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit continue to rest and abide with us all now and forevermore, till we meet again. Amen. <laughs>